So the idea behind spectral sequences is that first you're given some initial computational problem about a chain complex C star that's too difficult or too large to attack straight on. So for example, say you're computing the singular homology of a space from a singular chain complex. What you can do is first filter the data of C star. So intuitively, this just means splitting it up into different layers of information about the original chain complex you have. Then you use this filtration to define a related algebraic object called the associated graded of C star, denoted GR of C star. Once you have this related algebraic object, you perform the calculation with GR of C star in place of C star. Ideally, this problem is easier in some sense than the original one, at least layer by layer. Now, the problem might be harder in terms of how many computations you must do, but ideally the computations will be more formal, meaning that you just need to rely on knowledge of the generators and relations instead of any higher order interactions coming from topological or geometric data. Finally, we relate this result back to the original problem. So spectral sequences, in essence, relate the homology of the associated graded back to the associated graded of the homology. Suppose we have some bigraded objects D and E fitting into exact triangles, as shown below, in the sense that the kernel of each map is precisely the image of the last. Here the differential D on E is bigraded and satisfies D equals J of K. Even though there are three entries in the diagram, the map I will usually be an inclusion between different filtration levels, so we call this an exact couple. And this one, shown in the diagram, will serve as the E0 page of a resulting spectral sequence which will be described in a few slides. Then taking the derived couple of this exact couple gives the E1 page, the next derived couple will give the E2 page, and so on. Now if we look at this diagram a little more carefully, we see that we can actually take the maps in this exact couple and use them to construct a commutative diagram as shown below. From here, we take the homology of the complex ER, DR along the bottom row to get the homology of ER, which will be ER plus 1 by definition. This is how we're defining the R plus 1 page. Now, a common way of arriving at an exact couple in the first place is to first endow your chain complex with a filtration. So a filtration must satisfy the following properties. F bullet of C star is a subgroup of C star. This notation is very common with spectral sequences and homological algebra in general, but it just means that FP of CQ is a subgroup of CQ for every P and Q. More specifically, we want F bullet of C star to be a subgroup of F bullet plus one of C star. This just means we want every filtration level to sit inside of the next filtration level. So this is an increasing filtration, even though there is an analogous decreasing filtration which is defined in the obvious way. We also want the filtration to be exhaustive. So for the third property, we want the union over all of the filtration levels to be the entire chain complex. This just means that we want to pick up everything in this filtration and not leave anything out. For the fourth property, it's somewhat subtle, but we do need the differential on the original chain complex to be compatible with the filtration. This is really the only non-trivial property of a filtration that you need to check. So intuitively, all of these properties give us a way of separating C star into different layers of information. Once we've defined a filtration on C star, we can define an associated graded object so that we get an exact couple giving rise to a nice spectral sequence. To that end, we define the associated graded to be the following. Notice that the filtration on C star, by construction, induces a filtration on our graded object, and furthermore, this object is actually bigraded, since it also retains the data of the internal grading of C. More explicitly, the bigrading on the associated graded can be described as follows. Now observe that the work done so far gives us short exact sequences. We can take the short exact sequences in the last slide and actually fit them into a short exact sequence of complexes as follows. The fact that the vertical sequences are in fact chain complexes comes from two things. The differentials from our original chain complex C star and the inclusions coming from the compatibility of the differential on C star and the filtration. From the short exact sequence of complexes, we obtain a long exact sequence in homology via the snake lemma. Now it's not too hard to see that we can use the maps in this diagram to yield an exact couple ED where E will actually be the homology of the associated graded, and D will be the homology of each filtration level of C star. The weird indexing in this formula isn't all that important. This is just supposed to be an overview of the construction of a spectral sequence. The point is that we do get an exact couple with E, providing the E0 page of a spectral sequence discussed in the next section.
As already discussed, we get an E0 page given by E, along with the differential D0 from E0 to itself. When we take the homology of this bigraded complex, we obtain another bigraded complex, namely the E1 page, corresponding to the derived couple of the original exact couple. We repeat this process until the spectral sequence stabilizes in the sense that one page is isomorphic to the next, term-wise. Notice that the pages will not be isomorphic as differential graded algebras because the differentials will necessarily have different by degree. This isomorphism only means that term-wise, for all p and q, we get that en pq is the same as en plus 1 pq. Now, there are various criteria used to determine whether a spectral sequence converges, but the basic idea is that there's convergence if and only if the differentials eventually vanish, at which point the homology will just be entry-wise isomorphic to the original en. For the first example, we're going to compute the homology of S3. Now, for this example and the following examples, most of the ideas can be generalized to any dimension. So, for example, even though we're computing the homology of S3, you could use these same ideas to compute the homology of Sn. There are two reasons I'm not doing general n. For one, I wanted this to be as explicit as possible. And second, the package I'm using to write up the spectral sequences does not support n as a dimension, so I can't type set spectral sequences with homology and dimension n, it has to be a definite dimension. Now, let's say that you wanted to compute the homology of S3. What you'd do is you'd compute the E2 page of the Serre spectral sequence. Writing p along the x-axis and q along the y-axis, you got the following diagram. Looking at this page, we can see that the only differential that can possibly be non-trivial is the one between entries 2, 0, and 0, 1. Now, formally, there's nothing telling us how this differential behaves unless we want to actually write out the long exact sequence in homology from the snake lemma, compute that boundary map, and then understand how it behaves after taking homology twice. However, there's an easier way using the fact that we have a long exact sequence in homology induced by the fibration. Looking at this long exact sequence, we can actually deduce that this differential corresponds to the map H2 of S2 to H1 of S1 above. This map is actually called the transgression, and analyzing it to understand how differentials behave in your spectral sequence is actually a very common technique. Since we know that pi 3 of S3, which is the integers, is the first non-trivial homotopy group, the Hurwitz theorem says that H1 of S3, which actually will be isomorphic to the co-kernel of our transgression, must vanish. Therefore, tau must be a surjection, and since tau is an endomorphism of the integers, this means that tau sends 1 to 1, so indeed tau is non-trivial and in fact it's an isomorphism. This tells us that the E3 page looks like this. For sparsity reasons, E3 equals E infinity. Sparsity reasons refers to the fact that differentials on further pages will overshoot any of the entries, so all of the differentials will be trivial. Therefore, hi of s3 is z for i equals 0 and 3, and hi of s3 is 0 otherwise. Then since we have the E infinity page here, we can look along each diagonal corresponding to P plus Q equals I. For I equals 0, there's only one entry along that diagonal, and it's just the entry in 0, 0. Since that's the only one, that must be the entire homology in dimension 0, as expected, since S3 is connected. Now, the only other diagonal which is non-zero is the one in dimension 3, and the only entry along that diagonal is entry 2, 1. Therefore, the homology in dimension 3 must be z. For the second example, consider the path space vibration from the loop space of S4 into star into S4. This again gives a spectral sequence with the following E2 page. Using the universal coefficient theorem and the fact that h star of S4 is z in dimension 0 and 4 and vanishes elsewhere, we get the following E2 page. Once again, we only have to consider certain differentials and consider whether they're non-trivial. In order to do this, notice that these are the last differentials that can possibly be non-trivial, since on further pages, all of the differentials must be zero. Since the total space is contractible, then, every entry except the one at zero, zero must vanish, meaning that all of these differentials highlighted are isomorphisms. For another example, consider the path space vibration from the loop space of k of z2 to star to k of z2. Here, k of z2 denotes the eilenberg maclean space with homotopy group z in dimension 2. Since each kgn has only one non-trivial homotopy group, 
it's not too hard to show that Whitehead's theorem and Milner's theorem together tell us that the loop space of k of z2 is k of z1, which is s1, up to homotopy equivalence. Then we get the following e2 page. Once again, we have to determine which of these differentials are non-trivial. So notice that the 0, 0 entry again must be z since it will survive to the e infinity page and must satisfy e infinity 0, 0 is h0 of star, which is of course z. To begin tackling the differentials drawn above, notice that once we reach the e3 page, the differentials must all be trivial since everything outside of rows 0 and 1 must vanish. Then they must all be isomorphisms, meaning h2i of k of z2 is z for all i greater than or equal to 0, and vanishes otherwise. We could have also used the fact that cp infinity is a kz2, and then just used the normal computation for the homology of complex projective space, but this gives a different way of finding that homology.